May I join the Governor of Kano State, Governor Umar Ganduje, and others to welcome you to the 12th Bola Tinubu Colloquium. And this will be my first colloquium where I'm not physically present at the venue. Uh, as I'm sure you've already heard, several of us did the best we could from Abuja uh, to get to Kano this morning. Let me begin by saying that The colloquium has become an institution, and it is an institution in honor of an institution, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. It was Barista Ismail Ahmed at the ninth colloquium in Abuja who said so insightfully, and I quote, there is perhaps no Nigerian leader who has been as instrumental in raising as many leaders as Ashiwaju which explains why I gathered here today is a serving vice president, several governors, former governors, commissioners, former commissioners, honorable ministers, former ministers, local government functionaries, social agitators, top ranking journalists who can trace their careers and political trajectories to Ashiwaju's leadership. What is responsible for this phenomenon is Ashiwaju's leadership style. And it is an unusual one, especially in developing democracies. Central to that style are the following. First, a belief that development, economic, social, political development depends on enabling a contest of ideas. Whether that is within a political party or its caucuses, a cabinet meeting, or even just sitting around and thinking through a problem. By exposing his own thoughts and ideas constantly to debate and contestation, he refines his views constantly and is at the cutting edge of issues as varied as artificial intelligence, vaccines, to even what sort of legal processes or arguments should be filed in a matter in court. I remember once when he was suggesting to me that he thought uh, it was better that we should contest jurisdiction in a particular case. And so many other times when he has, in, when he has uh, introduced his own legal thoughts to a, to a matter, I've had to keep reminding him that he's not a lawyer. And of course, I'm sure you have to remind him several times that he's not many different things. Second, perhaps, and more importantly, because he is not afraid of having his ideas scrutinized, criticized by even his subordinates, is able to lead a vast array of persons of strong, deeply held convictions and a variety of ideologies. The third in that leadership style is that he is completely comfortable engaging across ethnic, religious, and partisan divides. It is belief that national development is only possible where we, the leaders, are constantly interrogating ideas, perspective, and, and opinions which is what led some of us who worked with him through the years to formalize our constant debates so that on his birthday, we open up discussions on some issue or issues of national importance. So starting in 2009, which was the inaugural colloquium, we addressed the question of electoral integrity with the theme, quote, every vote must count. In 2010, uh, a theme similar to what we have this year, affirmed our belief in a United Nation. Quote, this house must stand. Then in 2011, we asked the question, and I quote, Nigeria, why isn't it working? How will it work? End of quote. In 2012, there was a, we had an exercise in retrospection and prognosis. And the theme that year was, I quote, looking back and thinking ahead. End of quote. The fifth colloquium examined the driving philosophy behind the imminent political phenomenon at the time, which was the creation of a new political party by a merger of existing political parties and its implications, the creation of the APC. The theme then was beyond mergers, a national movement for change. Then came the summit of the common man in 2014, chronicling the everyday challenges of citizens and proposals to remediate these concerns. By 2015, the theme was, and I quote, change how it will work. 2016, the focus 
was on the sector that contributes the highest to our GDP, agriculture. The theme was, and I quote, agriculture, action, work, revolution, end of quote. The spirit of Nigerian enterprise was on display in 2017 with the Make It in Nigeria theme. Make It in Nigeria in 2017. In 2018, it was investing in people to examine the shape and substance of Africa's largest social investment program, the National Social Investment Program. In 2019, we addressed the question of employment and productivity under the rubric of, and I quote, work for the people, work for people. Regrettably, in 2020, as we all know, uh, where we were meant to showcase innovative ideas in education, but had to cancel on account of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're here today to engage at another of those crucial points in our national journey. At a time when a combination of challenges worsened by the fallouts of a global pandemic has created a storm of socioeconomic problems. The default mode of some at times like this is to stoke tendencies, viewpoints, and opinions that threaten the Federation and our unity. But the colloquium, as usual, bets on Nigeria and its creative and resilient people. Our theme this time is our common bond, our common wealth. Focuses on peace, and we focus on peace building and national cohesion. We intend to interrogate from a national and regional perspective innovative strategies for sustaining peace and prosperity in a heterogeneous society. We believe that we now have an opportunity to increase the numbers of a new tribe of Nigerians, a tribe of men and women of all faiths, tribes, and ethnicities, committed to run a country on high values of integrity, hard work, justice, and love of country. A tribe of men and women who are prepared to make the sacrifices and self-constraints that are crucial to building a strong society. Who are prepared to stick together, to fight for equity and justice, side by side. A tribe consisting of professionals, businessmen, politicians, religious leaders, and all others who believe that this new Nigeria is possible and that already this and already we have built and are building the building blocks for this new Nigeria. As I close, let me say how deeply indebted we are to His Excellency the Governor of Kano State, Governor Omar Ganduje. Only a few days ago, we were set to have a completely virtual colloquium with a hub in Lagos, the customary location of the colloquium, when Governor Ganduje graciously offered to host the physical aspect of the hybrid colloquium. By this gesture, Governor Ganjuje has helped us to tell two stories. The first is that this is the first time that the colloquium is being hosted outside Lagos or Abuja, the capital city. And it is befitting that Kano should be that place. This is the city of radical and progressive ideas and ideologies, a city whose leading political likes have always been left of center for the purveyors of breaking up into small components, into small countries, Perhaps they should be reminded that we would not have been able to accept Governor Ganduje's offer to come to Kano at short notice, since we would all have needed visas to come to Kano. Let me also thank our brothers, His Excellency George Ware, President of Liberia, and His Excellency Dr. Ernest Baikoroma, former President of Sierra Leone, who very kindly consented to participate and share their thoughts and experiences on the implications of conflict. Ashwadu, you, uh, may I, as I have done in the past 12 years, pray for you that the Lord God Almighty will help you, that as your days, so shall your strength, so shall your wisdom, and so shall your favor with God. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you all.